Welcome to Make More Marbles. My name is Brad Hart, and we're here to interview the game changers, the future makers, the co-collaborators and creators who are here to collaborate with one another towards a better future for all of us. Enjoy the show. We've got a great guest coming up for you right now. Welcome to Make More Marbles. What's going on? My name is Brad Hart, and today I am thrilled, excited, and a little bit, um, I guess, tingly? Tingly <laughs> would be the word I would describe. Uh, it's a beautiful day in sunny San Diego, and I'm here with Kevin Cranshaw in Dallas, Texas. What's going on, Kevin? That's up. Uh, it's us going great, man. Love life. Join every second. Yeah, of it. love it, brother. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm watching your shirt there, the Spiritual Gangster shirt. I think J.P. Sears might have popularized it, but I'm seeing them everywhere, and I I can't really be sure where it came from, but it's a pretty awesome shirt, and I appreciate you rocking it for the show. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, totally, absolutely. So um, you're in Dallas. Are you yes. from there originally? No, Memphis, Tennessee. Born and raised oh, right in Memphis. On. Uh, moved here about two and a half years ago. Okay, cool. Like, and uh, you, you got into the fitness space. Can we talk a little bit about how you've kind of evolved over the years and where you landed today and kind of give people like a sense of where you came from and what you're all about? Totally, yeah. So um, about eight years ago is when it all started for me. I was 100 pounds, skin and bones, severely heavily medicated for ADD. ADHD, I had sleep apnea, allergies, asthma, I was taking breathing treatments, inhalers. Um, I was suicidal and depressed, and I just kind of lived my life like that. I uh, didn't really have many friends, or they couldn't really express myself, and I found my expression through art. Uh, but then I even started to hate that because I was getting like picked on for being girly or whatever, right? And so I grew up around all of that, and just my escape was video games and I didn't have a social life. And I was that kid that sat by myself at lunch. And, um, I just kind of put up with it for so long until one day, like it wasn't a day that was out of the ordinary, nothing happened differently. But one day I just snapped and I was like, I can't keep living like this. Hmm. Uh, all is the straw that broke the camel's back. All that pressure just built up. And I was like, Nope, this is it. I'm going. And so, uh, cause I had tried to work out before and to get muscles and to get girls or whatever. But at that point it was really for, I needed to change my life. And so that's when I found fitness and I just started moving. I didn't even know what I was doing, but um, I dove in head first into fitness to really just save my life. Again, I didn't know what I was doing and I did a lot of research on things as I went and I started seeing results. Then my ego exploded because my confidence went through the roof because I was my, my uh, reputation at school was like, Oh, like shredded. They like the people that were picking on me were coming to me for fitness advice. And that was <laughs> or like seriously in a year's time. Right. So I'm like, well, dang. And that kind of gave me, that gave me the first sense of like purpose in life really. Uh, when people were asking me, dude, I'm, you know, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? And I'm like, Oh yeah, totally. And I helped them. And, but it really solidified when one of my close friends, I was helping him out and he kind of thanked me for changing his life. And that was when I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. But my route was art. Like I was, a, I'm a, I still am a really good artist, I, I, you know, acrylic paintings, drawing, stuff like that. So everybody kind of knew me that I was going to go to school for art and all I did was play video games. So I was going to go, had a full ride at the Art Institute out in Nashville um, for a single painting that I did. And I was going to go make video games, learn that whole thing. And literally right before college started, I um, changed my mind and went, nope, I'm going to fitness. And, you, you know, my parents almost disowned me and, <laughs> and they're like what the heck you mean you have a full ride scholarship for your art and you don't want to do it yeah and uh because i i wanted to do what filled my heart and i would find a way to fill my wallet not the other way around and so um, oh, i get it i was i was being I, like you know that would be what your parents would say um yeah, yeah so okay great so you your first passion was art you found that you could transform people through fitness and that really lit you up so that's obviously what you went after um, so what does your life look like today and talk about some of the people you help? Yeah. So, I mean, now it's, I'm at online fitness programs. Um, I'm helping a lot of men have more energy and confidence. Um, so it's not, yeah, gaining muscle mass, losing body fat percentage, whatever, but it's leaking that into other areas of their life so that I help a lot of entrepreneurs. So, uh, you know, having more energy to devote to your business or showing up more confident on your sales calls or whatever, again, because you're taking care of your body. Uh, which sets the basis of everything. If you, you know, if you're trying to do a race or a run a business, uh, get from point A to point B, and would you want to pick a Honda or a Lamborghini? You know, and your body is kind of and how it operates on a cellular level, you get to determine that. So um, it's it's helping them do that, and that's really fulfilling. 
for what I do. I'm also a group fitness instructor. I have been for the past five years. So that's just something that lights me up uh, to put a mic on and yell at people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Of fun. I do that every day. So I love it. And I've, I've done a bunch of those classes where it's like spin or Zumba or any number of different <laughs> things where, you know, yeah. you just get pushed more in that environment. I think it takes a special kind of masochist to be able to push themselves to the limit. Mm -hmm. You know, like in a, as a runner or whatever it is, like I, I look at guys like Casey Neistat. Um, by the way, that's my buddy Blake uh -huh. Jameson that created that one, an original art piece. I bought a few from him over the years and given them to friends. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, he's like a spray paint graffiti type artist, but he's really high end and does great stuff. Um, but yeah, I look at like the Casey Neistats of the world who can masochistically just beat themselves in the submission and run like 10 marathons a week. And I'm up to about a marathon a week, but you know, I, I've never done as well in a, solo environment as I've done in a group environment. Do you think there's science to back that up or do you think it's just different people that um, get different results in different environments? Um, I think that there's, I, would, I wouldn't say science. It's you're, I'm, I'm helping people build leverage um, in their motivation. So I don't, I'm not just like, come on guys, you can do it. I mean, obviously I'm saying that and it kind of helps to hear somebody else say you can do it. You're going to think, oh, okay, I got this, right? Because if you're, if you're going, holy shit, this is hard. I can't do this. I can't hold on anymore. Then you're going to stop. But if you're like, no, I got this, I got this. Right. So I kind of help with that. But I refer in my classes a lot of times, and this is why all my classes are packed and we have full classes every single time is because I refer to their goals. And I'm like, why are you here in the first place? Even before class, I set it up. Why'd you show up to class today? You had a million excuses. You could be somewhere else. Remember what you're here for. And I want you to use that when the going gets tough. And then I do like in the middle of the heat of everything. I'm like, why are you here? You need to work for that. And so it's reminding them of that instead of the pain of, oh my God, my biceps are about to fall off, whatever it is. Right. Like, uh, so I think there's something to be said with that. And it's just a psychological game. So somebody can do that, you know, in by themselves. And I teach my clients online how to do that, or I can be on a mic telling it to you. But it's, at the end of the day, the same muscle of that self-discipline versus motivation, right? Like, you can motivate yourself for a second, or you can build your self-discipline muscle, and that's your internal dialogue. So it's, uh, it's internal. I'm essentially trying to gear their internal dialogue to positive instead of negative in the heat of the moment when it's really freaking tough. So, okay. So yeah, you, you, they're in this group environment and you kind of talk to them about their goals and then you use their goals as motivation. How does it show up in other areas of their life? Once they kind of get this self-discipline rolling, you help them to shape that with fitness. I know this has been my story. How does that kind of start to reverberate throughout their whole existence? Totally. So, you know, when you push yourself in the gym and I, and I talk to my clients, it's like you go to the gym with the intention of building your emotional muscles, your physical muscles are a byproduct of that. So if you go to the gym and you're like, my goal is to make myself proud and you push yourself and you make yourself proud, you go beyond what you think you can do, then you set a new standard for yourself and you almost get addicted to that push and you go, how else can I do that? Right? So for example, one of my, one of my friends, Diego, he's a client of mine. He's Diego saw, Corzo. Yeah. He was on the show. Uh, he's awesome. I love Diego. Yeah. Um, he, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's awesome. It's so oh, small. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, or did, what was your, what was the last name you said? Corzo. Corzo. No, Christina. Oh, my bad. Okay. Yeah, 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 sorry. Um, anyway, but yeah, he's pretty cool. Awesome too. He's an online, uh, he helps people in relationships, especially women. He, um, was kind of lacking like discipline in his business. And we built that in the gym and now he is crushing it in his business. Just got back from a few different live events and really making an impact and scaling it there. But it, he accredits it to building that emotional muscle in the gym. And it's because you're going to add it with the intentions of leaking it to other areas of your life instead of just, I'm going to change my fitness. Cause especially guys and I, and I coach a lot of guys, right? We segment things. Um, but if you can go at it, I'm going to, change my fitness so I can change my family or I'm going to change my fitness so I can change my business. Then it starts to leak and flow naturally uh, like it's supposed to. Yeah, I like that. And, and I've noticed this show up in my own life and you got to be able to kind of turn the old, you know, spotlight back on yourself once in a while. It's like, I have a high need for variety. I'm very extroverted. I love people. I want to be in different places, different people. And that's the exact antithesis of building anything worthwhile. 
right? So I'll go on these periods where I'll work really, really, really hard and stay grounded and stay focused. And then I'll eventually burn out without realizing it and want to just go and screw off around the world and do fun travel, which is great in certain doses, but you got to be able to balance that, right? So, so learning for me to catch myself when I'm like, oh, I want to have variety, which is really just I'm not taking care of myself, which is really just I need to be better at, at taking breaks and actually you know, having the discipline to do that yeah. and, and not getting down on myself or self-sabotaging when things aren't working out the way that I want them to or right. not that's everything good, is rosy. That's good point. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I discipline, my discipline now is not about like going to the gym and eating clean because that's a second nature to me. My right. You've already formed now, that habit. Right. My discipline now is turn off. <laughs> like when do yeah. I turn off? Right? When do I uh, like, like take time for myself? And, and this it, is the gold here. Cause a lot of people like we can talk, we can gear this to the person who wants to get in shape or do anything, but these are all the same types of habits. So like what has worked for you? Because this is a problem I'm trying to solve in my own life. And I'm sure there's other people out there that are high performers and they've got that piece yeah. down. They can go, 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 but they're like burning out because they're in second gear and they're trying to drive from London to Russia. You'll get there, but you might burn the engine out in the meantime. Right. So um, I'll, I'll to, to answer that question, I'm going to share a story. So there was a period in my life um, well, actually, this was last year. I was homeless for six months, um, right at the beginning of my business, and I was couch surfing and a bunch of stuff. And I would have four different jobs. I was a personal trainer, group fitness instructor. Um, I just had started my online business, so it wasn't really making money. It was more taking money. And I was a server and a bartender. And I was sleeping four hours a night, seven days a week, work, literally working uh, throughout the clock. And I burnt out. Like, I literally could not do anymore. I remember one day, all of my bosses got onto me for something that day. And I, that was kind of like my wake up call. Like, dude, you're not, you're not functioning. And that's when I was like, I completely forgot to take care of me, you know, and I, your body isn't a machine. And, you know, sometimes we, there are seasons where you do need to push, but you can't push for forever. And so to scale back on that, like, and, and to answer your question on how do you find that groove? This is what I've been doing recently is scheduling it in. Like when you schedule in time to work out, you also need to schedule in time for your relationships or for yourself to literally chill out and do nothing and turn your phone off and go for a walk, like breathe. It's, it seems counterintuitive. And that's why a lot of high achievers don't do it is because you're like, well, I need to be in my computer right now. I need to be working at my business. No, you need to clear your mind so you can come back to your business with a focus. Or maybe you go on a walk and you get an amazing business idea that shifts and it is the next level forward, right? And so I've been implementing that myself to where if I start to feel anxious or I start to feel like there's internal block, I'll just shut down everything and walk out of my house and take a breather for a second. Even if it's literally two minutes, I'll just do some deep breathing and come back to it. Cause, cause I, I, you gotta get your hands off of it for a second and come at it at a different perspective. So again, I'm an, I am an artist and I've been tapping into that side of, of myself a lot more cause I lost it for about four years where I didn't even touch it. But I did this fun challenge yesterday where I photo blogged my day. So instead of a blog or a blog, whatever, I literally just took pictures of stuff throughout the day at really cool angles. And I was like, that's almost a metaphor for your life. Like if you don't like, if you don't love your life, you either need to change your life or change your perspective. Like you probably have an amazing life. And if you're watching, you're listening, watching to this podcast, I guarantee you you're very blessed because you have a computer or a phone and some people don't even have food. So you need to take that in consideration and be grateful too. And I think that's a, a, one of the big things that has gotten me through a lot in life is just gratitude for what you have and stop looking at what you don't because especially high achievers they we tend to look at like what we need well the next thing will stop and celebrate the fact that you just freaking did what you just did you know yeah and it sneaks up in crazy ways like i've been recording these podcasts for example i have like 50 episodes in the can now and it's great i, I love that i have that buffer and that was by design and like i didn't want to have to always be stressing about oh we can't get this many guests or that many guests or whatever uh, yeah. so i did it that way but when i went to launch it on monday it was so anticlimactic to me, not because it, it wasn't exciting, but like I've been doing it so long I'm in it so long that like all my friends are like, way to bury the lead, Brad. You launched your podcast today. You didn't even tell anybody you were going to launch it. Like we would have totally promoted and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I didn't even like take a minute to just be like grateful that I actually created something and launched it. And it was beautiful. 
Yeah. And then the other thing to your point, I really like the idea of scheduling time, but then what happens when other people's needs bleed into your time? Because, right. you know, you have this thing or somebody needs you uh, when you have this time schedule for yourself and it, it seems urgent and important, or maybe that's just the lesson I need to learn next is just setting that boundary. Uh, what do you kind it's of do? Boundaries a little bit, but then, all, yeah, it's boundaries a little bit, especially if you have a caring and loving heart and you want to take care of other people, you want to help other people. Um, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you're yeah. burnt out, you're, there is no way you can help out anybody else. Yeah. Uh, so self-care isn't selfless. I agree with that 100%. You know, I had these uh, F off Fridays booked in my calendar for a long time, and it just wasn't working after a while, um, where I would just literally take a day on Friday and just not talk to anybody. Because I talk a lot to a lot of people, and a lot of people want to talk to me. And that's fine. I love that. And that's what lights me up until, you know, I get to the end of the week, and I'm so shot from doing it. You know, I've done, yeah. I'm doing six, seven podcasts on Tuesdays, just, just that, and then all the other stuff. Uh, you know, you need time to just be with yourself and maybe write or read or, or work on a project that's just not focused on this. Right. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to reinstitute institute F off Fridays. I'm going to go surfing in the morning and just whatever happens in the afternoon. There you go. I love it. So I guess to, for your listeners, um, sake, what did you find when you were doing F off Fridays? Did it help in your business because you had that space? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'd like to say that it was, you know, this magical thing that I instituted and it never uh, failed ever again, but it, it really didn't. Like I started doing it for maybe two, three weeks and I liked it. And then something came up where I had to be somewhere on a Friday and I traveled and I forgot completely about it. Uh, you know how that goes, you know, where it's in your calendar as a reminder. And I, I just got to get more consistent with my own stuff. You know, that's it. You know, I, everybody likes to come on and say um, they got it all figured out. I don't. I don't know anybody who actually does. Uh, and, and I'm okay with that and I'm vulnerable about where I'm failing and just calling myself out. And these reminders are great, you know, cause I, I can spend this time, um, be, just being reminded of the stuff that maybe I'm not hundred percent, you know, in, in alignment with or in integrity with, as far as my word goes, uh, to myself. And that's, it's really hard for me to break a promise to somebody else. I will go, I'll move heaven and earth to do things for other people, but keeping a promise with myself should be paramount. Mm hmm because right. otherwise, how can I help anybody, right? If I'm not yeah. taking care of myself. So thank you for the reminder. And for the people listening yeah. at home, maybe we need to have occasional check-ins and integrity checks with ourselves, you know? And all I mean yeah. by integrity is not from a moral perspective. I like these landmarks definition. Is your life working for you or not? Are you in alignment with your word or not? Mm. Yeah, that's good. And like we were saying, the, uh, the whole, if you, if you don't like your life, change your perspective, change your life. Yeah. And you, you yep. nailed it right on the head, man. I mean, we just we built a house in Mexico a month ago for a family. I was living on dirt, mm. you know, and we're doing it again in December and worked in Syrian refugee camps. I mean, you, would, you think you got a bad life? Go to the Syrian refugee camps, go to Mexico. You know, I don't know why I was born on this side of the border versus that side of the border. You know, I don't know why these things happen and what they're here to teach us. Um, but I can make up a meaning, right? And I choose an empowering meaning, but there's the reality of that. Some people are born with very little and, and for you to poo poo or, or not be grateful is just succumbing to the law of familiarity. You can get used to anything, great yeah. wealth, great poverty, whatever it is. Um, but ideally gratitude and appreciation helps you appreciate more. And then what you appreciate also appreciates in your life and a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Definitely. I would agree with that. So, so talk to us a little bit about where you see your own vision and mission going and expanding to, right? So you went from veritably homeless. And I don't know whether that was, you know, like real homelessness, like you, you didn't have a place to go or you couldn't earn enough money to live or whatever it was, or whether it was a choice just to not have a place for a while, which I, I know a lot of people make nowadays, especially with the nomading and vagabonding that go on. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, just kind of give us a sense of like, all right, you've come from where you come from. You've obviously got a few things on the ball. What does the next three to five years look like for you, Kevin? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, obviously my keep rolling with my fitness stuff. I'm working on a few new programs right now just for ease of access, people that don't have gym memberships to people that do all that. But I integrate the psychology behind it all. It is like a, here's your workout plan, here's your nutrition, but hey, we need to switch your mindset about this. And like we were talking about before, how do you get to the point where you can push yourself beyond your own limits without somebody, without me physically being there telling it to you. Uh, so I teach all the psychology behind that and building discipline versus motivation and all that stuff, building that leverage. Um, so I'm going to definitely keep the ball rolling up with that, but I'm starting now to dive into 
uh, masculine and feminine energies. And what I was talking about before with what I, my high ticket uh, clients um, who work a lot more one-on-one -on -one with me, all the guys, I'm doing a lot more of work on that end around relationships. I've, I've been learning for the past five years and all, almost obsessed about why miscommunications happen between the sexes. Like, you know, it, uh, there's a saying behind every angry, angry woman is a man who doesn't know what the, like what the heck he did wrong. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so why does stuff like that happen? And I've been obsessed with that because, uh, I was, my ex fiance broke up with me unexpectedly had no, it blindsided me. And I was like, and that was the instant where I was just like, why did that happen? And I know it happens to other people. And there was just a miscommunication and an, of intentions, or I wasn't giving her what she needed or whatever. So how can I make sure this never happens again and never happens for other people? And so I, and that kind of got me down a rabbit hole of that whole realm of with like dating and relationships and masculine fem, and feminine energies. And it's more of an internal game than an external one is what I found. Um, so I'm diving a lot more into that and somehow going to integrate it with my trainings. Because like we were saying before, like I was, you know, people come to me, they're like, how do I get abs? And then a month later, they're not, it's not just about that. And they know it. And it's about yeah. oh, I need to fix my relationships or, oh, I need to, you know, pour more time into my business or I'm not happy in the job I'm at. So whatever. But the surface level is usually something fitness related and we dive a lot deeper into the internal journey that it is. And so it's diving in more into that realm so that I can further serve my clients and people that come across my path. So. Yeah. And, and you made a great point. It's like health, wealth relationships. People don't have business problems or, or, you know, money problems. They have life problems that manifest in their business or their relationships or their business or, or their money uh, situation. So, you know, what are some of the warning signs, I guess, for people that, you know, before it gets so painful that you found where you like lose a relationship or something really drastic happens, it makes you have to shift. What are some of the warning signs that people can, can pick up on, especially men, you know, and you know, there's like old jokes, there's a million jokes you could tell about like the, 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 you know, how to interact with women manual would be like an encyclopedia <laughs> size or whatever, right? You can always make right. jokes, but it's true. Like we have different yeah. communication styles. We have different needs for different reasons and sure we have like the same core human needs, but at the, at the level of which we express to one another and communicate with each other, it's like we got brand, broadband and there's like, uh, or a uh, dial up rather to communicate with each other. And it's like all this broadband of stuff that's trying to get across. And I think men especially have the um, proclivity to maybe be a little more closed, you know, or a little more um, right. logical, for example, you know, they go into their head and, uh, I've known a lot of really wonderful women over, over my life, luckily that have helped me kind of understand these things and That's having good. grown up with no women around and my mom left and all of the whole thing. It, it took me a long time to really get to a place where I was good with that. And, mm -hmm. um, I wish I could shorten the learning curve. So what have you found to be like these warning signs and then ultimately the tools that have allowed you to, uh, communicate better with the opposite sex? Right. So, um, I'll come at it from a man's perspective, you know, looking at women, but um, the, one of the big things is our brains literally don't work the same at all. Men are singular focused. We focus on one thing at a time and women have what's called diffused awareness. It's where they can take in literally everything. They're on the phone with a friend, they're taking care of the baby and they're cooking at the same time, right? Like they, they need to be able to do that. But men have like singular focus. So, you know, we're on this podcast right now. Literally, this is our world. I don't know what's like going on outside until I think about it. Right. Or so it, in that sense, that comes into play with dating and relationships a lot. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of all this stuff. Um, Alison Armstrong is a really good resource for all this stuff. Um, what is it? Was it called in sync? It's an audio series. If you got audible, um, that I learned a lot. There's also one about understanding women. So if you wanted to check that one out, <laughs> it definitely helped my understanding of women. Um, but yeah, she has a bunch of amazing stuff that covers all the dating side of all that. But um, so you're talking about red flags in in terms of relationships, yeah? Yeah, like what what could you have seen coming? Okay, looking back like, now, knowing what you knew for yourself, and then what what are some typical red flags that that people should be on the lookout for in their relationships? Right, totally. So um, you know, I there there was an issue, and 
for a lot of guys when there's an issue and we don't know for a hundred percent, if we can solve it, we tend to just kind of not do anything. Um, and we just, fr we're frozen. And so we're just, Oh, I'm not going to deal with it. Hopefully it'll solve itself. And obviously that doesn't happen. The thing just get worse. So, uh, men, especially if we have an issue, we don't talk about it. We, don't, well, we definitely don't talk about it, but we don't show it. And we try to we dive into the thing that we're confident in. So, if you have a relationship problems, you're going to pour a lot of time into work because you're more confident there. But the relationships with suffering and if you don't have a happy wife, you don't have a happy life. So, you know, there's, it's going to nag at you even while you're at work. Um, that's going to just fall apart. And so I think it, it comes into play with, with men, especially um, we need to tackle those things that we know are kind of nagging at us or we know we need to talk about if your woman is uh, like stressed, like help her out. Like, man up and and help her um if she if you feel like if you and this is the biggest thing if you feel like something is wrong it probably is mm -hmm. so you need to communicate it and it can be a scary thing so you don't know what she's going to react like but you need to be the man and say look i'm i and communicate your intentions i'm noticing this and i love you and i want this for us what's going on? How can I help? How can I be more for you? It's how can I be more for you versus, Oh, you need to do this better and you need to do that. Make sure you do that. Right. Like it's not pointing fingers. It's what can I do and focusing on yourself. And when the two of you can come together at it like that, then it'll, it'll blossom into something awesome. But, um, does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes, it's a great workflow. It's like, Hey, um, it's not pointing fingers. It's I'm noticing that this is coming up for me. This is my hallucination of what's going on here. And, um, yeah, let's chat. What, what, how can I be, be better? How can I do more for you? And, 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 you know, depending on your relationship style, there's different dynamics, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, mileage may vary and people are different, you know, even as subsets of their own gender and, and what they like. But, um, I think knowing, a person and being intimate with a person is really a depth question, right? It's like, how deeply do you understand their needs and how they like those needs met? And a relationship is a place you go to give things. Totally. Yes. Not get. And that's, um, yeah, I have to tell that to like everybody. Yeah. And if both parties <laughs> show up in that space, you know, if both parties show up and as givers, then they both get yeah. their needs met. And if not, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really at the core of a lot of relational problems or these people just aren't in a place where that even made sense in the first place. And it, it was doomed to begin with. Um, but that's, that's just a time and maturity thing. I think everybody's going through their own story arc and they need to have different experiences before they can really know who they are and what they want. And then from that place, find a mate who is appropriate for them, um, totally. on more levels than just what they look like or you know, how attractive you are to that person. I mean, that's, that initially will draw you in, but it won't sustain a relationship. Totally. Um, okay, cool. And you're married now or? No. Okay. Single. <laughs> Got it. But I've just done, I've just done a lot of research and on this stuff. So I, that's how I've been able to help out other people. I've, um, hooked somebody up that is now engaged. So that happened. Right on. Yeah. And if people are getting value, you know, and you've had relationships, everybody's had relationships in the past they can draw from for experience. Um, you know, I think value is in the eye of the beholder, right? If, if you, yeah. if people feel genuinely helped, they're getting better results in their life. And, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, I used to really be hardcore about qualifications and certifications. What I'm realizing now is that people use that as an excuse not to help. Mm, they feel, wow. you know, they feel like, Oh, well, I'm not qualified to talk about that. Like this just happened to me in my mastermind. I'll just tell a quick personal story. I yeah. have a client who has uh, been divorced twice and had, now is happily married and um, really gets what that like and how much it sucks. And I have another uh, member of my team who was having trouble in, in his relationship. And I never put it together that, well, I felt unqualified to help because I've never been married. That was the first thing. And then I never put it together that, hey, this other guy who really gets this piece, who came to us for business help, could totally help him. I never put that together. So uh, he got really upset with me because he's like, dude, you know, this is what I do. Like, why didn't you just, I was like, you know what? Honestly, I just never made the connection. I'm pretty good at making connections. I just never, never came up. And I was really glad he called me out because now I realize like, it's not my responsibility to solve every problem. I'm not qualified to solve every problem. But guess what? 
I can make a recommendation for somebody to go further down the road and not just sit and suffer. And you got to let all the pretenses go of clients versus, you know, the facilitators versus the business owner, whatever. It's all got to dissolve and we all got to just be people first yeah. and then form those relationships and then build arrangements around that, that are mutually beneficial and valuable. And if you drop your, if you drop the ball as a leader, your if your people are suffering, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and it's not your fault in the sense like it's all up to you, but it's it's your fault that if you're not taking distinct, clear action as a leader to make sure that the people in your life have what they need or at least have been offered, they have to show up and use it, uh, what they need or encouragement or, or inspiration or whatever it is that, that you can provide, mm-hmm. whether you're the best in the world at it or not, like stop waiting to be the best in the world at something. Stop waiting to have all the answers yourself and just help. Sometimes yeah. helping is just listening like intently to somebody just kind of unloading on you mm. that that's helpful. Sometimes it doesn't have to be anything magical. You don't have to be right. the best in the world at it. Totally. So, um, Kevin, if, um, if you were to look back at your life so far, how old are you right now? 23. Nice. All right. And I've been interviewing a lot of young entrepreneurs and it's just been an incredible experience to see where people are at compared to where I was at and just seeing, it's, it's honestly very encouraging how much knowledge and sage wisdom the average 20 something had that I didn't have certainly in my peer group didn't have. And it's just yeah. a 10 year difference. Right. Um, so, you know, thank you for that. And thank you for being part of this generation of people who actually want to, you know, grow and contribute and give back and be a part of the solution and not feed the problems. Um, so thank you for that. But also, you know, like you have your whole twenties ahead of you and it's great yeah. to see and I know that you're going to be making bigger and bigger dents in the world. And, you know, these things will work out and these things won't, and it'll continue to shape you as a man. But like, what do you, what are you really most looking forward to? And what do you, what would you say have been your biggest accomplishments so far? Like when you look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day, you say to yourself, you know, I'm grateful that you're alive, which I hope you do. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you haven't told yourself lately, you know, that I'm grateful <laughs> that you're alive, then maybe you should start. Um, yeah. What are the things you're grateful for? What are the things that you're looking forward to? I'm grateful for, um, man, I'm proud of myself first off for all this, everything that I've achieved or gone through and made it to the other side. And because of all of that stuff that I've gone through, I'm able to help out other people go through it as well. I'm in, in whatever area of life it is. So I'm, I'm excited about, well, I'm proud too of just like my clients I've got hundreds of before and after pictures and testimonials and it's not just, Oh, Kevin, help me get abs. It's way deeper. And, um, it's looking at that and, and the inspiration that I've brought to other people to change their life and just the ripple effect that that brings. Cause you know, who, who knows whose life they could change, um, out of that. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for just my career and what it's going to shape to be, you know, I don't know, 10 years down the road, I just know the next step ahead of me. And that's still stuck with fitness and still keeping that ball rolling and blowing that up and somehow tying in this masculine feminine thing into it, or, or maybe making that its own thing one day. But I see that being a, being a big piece in my future as well. Um, because like you said, like I'm, I'm, I've got my whole twenties ahead of me. I'm only 23. Like anything could happen if something else could come in and be my mission, you know, but I'm just taking the ball and rolling with it. Yeah. And people might be listening to this and be like, Oh, this kid's 23. What is, you know, everybody has something to offer. I don't care if you're 12 or 15 or 18. I know 15 year old kids that are making multi millions of dollars and running teams of hundreds of people. It's crazy what is possible these days with yeah. the right mindset. And, and really it's not even just having the right mindset. It's like not having all the negative, you can't do it influences. I grew up around a lot of that stuff, right? If my slate was just clean and I didn't have a lot of trauma and blockage and boundary crap and just stuff that I'm working through, like I would have been a lot further along in life. And I know we're all here for a purpose. I know we're all progressing at our own rate and it's not a competition. Certainly Uh, it's a cooperation, right? I want to rise up young people that are doing, that are on the right path, right? Even if they don't have all the answers, even if they don't, quite have it all figured out. Even if they're not like the world renowned expert yet, they're on their way. 
And we can see and plot their trajectory over time. We can see and understand how they grow in shape and maybe have a small influence on them as well as they continue to grow into the world-changing leader that they will one day be. Because guess what? Everybody who's president now or senator or congressman or you know, head of a Fortune 500 company now was once a 23-year-old kid. Mm. Yeah. Or a 32-year-old kid or whatever age you are. It doesn't matter, right? Like people look at me sometimes like, what the hell would I listen to you for? I'm like, because mm. maybe I have a few things on the ball. I'm not saying I'm yeah. perfect, but you know, there's a few things I've figured out in my life and born of great pain and perseverance, I've managed to become an expert at some things and to really succeed in some areas and to dismiss anybody because of their age or because of their statute uh, or what they've not or done or, or still are yet to do in life is silly. And I, and you know, yeah. I, I really truly believe that if everybody just stepped up as a leader in society, the whole world would shift. The reason I love entrepreneurs and why I do what I do so much, I'm going a little bit on a rant here is because entrepreneurs create more than they consume and they create before they consume. And if everybody just did that, just created a little more than they consume and created before they consume, the world would shift overnight. Mm. That's good. I borrowed that from Kurt. He's Kurt Walker. He's, he's a consummate connector like myself. Um, Sweet. People always come into your life for different reasons. I, I truly believe that today was the reason for this interview was for me to be reminded that life is what's happening now and make the best of it. Yeah. I think for me, it was to reflect back and go, I'm only 23. In a good way, but like, I compare a lot. Of yeah, of course you do. Hang Everybody around, does. Hang out Comparison, people. imposter syndrome, who am I to say this or do this? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. I don't have the much of the who am I. I have more of like, I hang out around people who are 30s and 40, like 30 year olds and 40 year olds who are, you know, have more time in the game than me and kind of beat myself up for not being at their, their spot yet. But it's, yeah, you know. And, and I spend a lot of time around peak performers and they all have something. They all have something yeah. they need to work on everybody, or, everybody or are working on. Something, right. Yeah, and I think just letting yourself be forgiven, right? Just forgive mm -hmm. yourself for being human. We all want to yeah. make ourselves machines, and we, we are not machines, as you said earlier. So Totally. Um, yeah, I guess the message of this show, if anybody's listening at home, is that it's, you know, it's now is the time. Just get started doing yeah. whatever it is that you're going to do and get feedback from people and, and try to do the right thing and communicate with them. Even if it's not the right thing for them right now, be willing to own up to that and be like, okay, well, how can I improve? Yeah. Uh, so Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. And I want to just close mm -hmm. out how I always close out, which is, um, you know, you've taken so much of your time and, and given so much value to us. And we're really grateful to have you here. What is a way that we can give back to you and connect you to a resource, an opportunity, a person, a system, or uh, multiples of such? that would help you move your mission forward faster. Yeah, totally. Um, just reach out to me either on Facebook, it's Kevin Crenshaw, or Instagram, Kevin Crenshaw Fitness, or my website's kevincrenshawfitness.com. Those are the best places to reach out to me. Right on, brother. We appreciate you being here. Um, and do you have any parting words to the audience? Totally. No, I would say um, discipline doesn't mean pushing yourself to the extreme. Um, it also means self-care. I like that. Discipline and self-care. I needed that message today. Thank you. You've already Literally. changed one life today. <laughs> yes. Winning. Many more coming. Winning. Totally. <laughs> right on, brother. Thank you so much for being here. Totally. Thanks so much for listening to the Make More Marvels podcast. For more tips, hacks, and strategies to create an amazing, abundant life in your health, wealth, and relationships, whatever that means to you, head on over to makemoremarbles.com. Check out our cool explainer video about what we're about and join our community of entrepreneurial game changers. We want to help you level up your life in every possible way. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and please do leave a review. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next podcast.